So this video is primarily for diabetics, especially type 2. But if you have a type 1, you can watch as well. We're going to talk about the diabetic brain. There's some interesting things that you need to know. Number one, the brain uses 20% of all the energy generated in the body, yet it only makes up 2% of the tissues. So it's an energy hog. So that's the first thing. I'm going to come back there in a minute. But there's a thing called diabetes type 3, which is Alzheimer's. So Alzheimer's in reality is diabetes of your brain because the effects of high blood sugar cause atrophy of certain parts of the brain. This part called hippocampus in the frontal lobe, and there's also other parts too, like the temporal lobe, and that's going to cause a loss of memory, a loss of your brain GPS, the ability to locate yourself in space. So you're walking outside looking for your car. I can't quite find that. But the problem is Alzheimer's starts way back over here, like 20 to 30 years before you start developing the major symptoms. So it starts small and it's brewing in the oven and then it gets worse and worse and worse. Now, the other thing I want to bring up is that when you destroy this part of the brain, you lose your memory. But there's a treatment called nasal insulin delivery, which you basically blow insulin up to your sinuses, it gets right up to the brain, and that has been shown to enhance your memory, right? So right there, you can see that insulin is involved. Insulin is involved with blood sugars, but insulin also has some other purposes of the brain that go beyond regulation of blood sugars as well, but I don't want to get sidetracked on that right now. Another interesting point is a healthy brain has four times as much insulin and ten times as many insulin receptors which means that when you have diabetes, obviously you have an insulin deficiency, as in insulin resistance, okay? However, they still haven't figured out where this is. Is it in the blood-brain barrier? Is it in certain parts of the brain? They don't, there's a lot of unknowns uh, with this, but all we know is that we need the right amount of insulin in the brain for it to work correctly. The other very interesting thing about the brain is that it does not store glycogen like your liver does and your muscles do. So it doesn't have a glycogen reserve. Glycogen is the storage of glucose, okay? So it doesn't store glycogen. It's dependent on glucose from your blood. Now, the glucose in your blood could be coming from glycogen in other parts of your body, but the point is we don't have this glycogen reserve like the muscles do, which the muscles can grab glycogen really fast. Your brain can't. It's totally dependent on what's happening with glucose. Okay, let me take it one step further. Your fat breaks down into fatty acids, which can be used for fuel, except the brain. The brain can't use fatty acids. And guess what? 60% of that fat turns into fatty acids. The heart can use this, the muscles can use it, but not the brain. Thank goodness we have the 40% ketones. Your brain can run on ketones. In fact, it loves ketones better than glucose. In fact, if you have glucose and ketones together in your blood, the brain will always pick ketones first over glucose. So ketones can act as an antioxidant in the brain, has anti-inflammatory properties, it increases oxygen, and bypass some of the damaged neurons and feed the brain directly. So we have only two fuel choices. We have glucose and we have ketones. So obviously you want to probably run on ketones, right? Well, the problem is you'll never do it unless you bring your carbs down below 50 grams. And the average person in America is consuming almost 300 grams of carbs, okay? That is the problem. And if we take a diabetic, a lot of times diabetics are consuming even more. That's why they have diabetes. Diabetes is a disease of high blood sugar. So why would you want to add more carbs to this, this problem? So in order to run your body on ketones, and this is what I'm recommending, you want to get your carbs down at least below 50 grams. I put a link down below of exactly how to do that. But I really wanted you to understand why you should be running your body on ketones because the more you're dependent on this glucose, you're constantly going to need food every three hours. You're going to need a snack. Your blood sugars come up and down and up and down. 
And then you start losing more and more insulin in the brain. Then you start getting placking in the brain and atrophy. Other than that, you're gonna be perfectly fine. All right, thanks for watching. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.